So now it's the semi final in the women's pair. We have Megan Calmo and Tracy Isa from, New Ze from the US up against Monica Lance and Lise Rustenberg from the Netherlands on the right of our picture. This is a challenge between the American pair and New Zealand pair. Well, that New Zealand pair is looking very much like a Dutch pair. I'm very sorry. Thank you and, very much uh, for correcting me. And I, am I right in thinking that the American pair, those girls were in the four earlier in the day? Megan Kelmo was in with, with Kim Crow in the four? I don't think she was deliberately in, initially oh, okay. entry, entered with Kim Crow. Um, there's a different, there's in the fours race, they weren't together, um, unless it was a late substitution. So I'm um, sorry for any confusion here. We've got uh, the crew from the Netherlands. Monica Lance was in the eight in Rio. She was uh, under 23 um, back in 2012. Megan Calmo and Tracy Iser were fifth in Rio in the quad. And it's the Dutch pair. They've got half a length coming out of the top of the island. Oh, and these are two world-class pairs we're looking at here, Greg. Slightly different styles. Look at that. The Dutch on the near side of the screen. They press with their legs and move their hands smoothly around the finish. The American pair on the far side. Look at that lean back. They're using a longer second half of their stroke, especially that bow woman there who's coming back down towards us. But do you know which the two styles, they're matching each other perfectly and it's matched pace at the moment. I think the American pair might have gone into a slightly better rhythm, a slightly more sustainable rhythm. And I wonder if that extra length is just going to help them, just squeezing a little bit more out of every stroke compared to the slightly more upright bodies that we could see on the crew from the Netherlands right in front of us. And it's almost, with the Dutch, it's almost a signature for them to be slow, slower out of the start and come home strongly in the second half of the race. So they got a good start. Now they're just drifting off a little bit, but it'll be interesting to see if they can, you know, perpetuate that signature and, and come home in the second half. Well, that's very true. We saw that in the women's double earlier on when they came in, in and came over the French in the last part of the race. And But look now here. The US crew, they've really pressed it on. The water there, that's not looking very good. The crowds of um, spectators and boats can mean that it rolls up a bit. And look at that, it is rolling up a bit. And that'll affect both their steering and their rhythm, Greg. Yeah, it's getting a little bit bumpy there around the barrier, about two minutes into the course. With this experienced crew of Megan Calmo and Tracy Iser handling it pretty well, riding over those waves pretty well. They're starting just to drift off the station. In a minute, they might need to get steered back. The Americans looking pretty strong there. Nice and crisp into the water. Just looks like a little bit more dynamic, doesn't it? Sarah pointed out for us right at the beginning the difference in the way their backs move. And with that American crew, it just looks like there's a little bit more acceleration, that little bit more surge, really, through that middle. You talked to me to us earlier about the, the ability to row the middle and the back end of the stroke. And they look like they've just got a bit more going on there than the Dutch crew do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice and dynamic, keeping on top of their work, propelling the boat. But it's a long race. It's a very long race, and the Dutch, we can't discount them. Looking at this here, it's, I love it. I love this shot when they're coming here. The Dutch, as you say, on the left-hand side, keeping the rhythm high, looking to stay in the race. The US, they look at the moment that they've just got that power. They've got that length. Prendergast and Gala, they're going to meet whoever wins this race in the final. We might be watching at YouTube. They'll have done their um, warm down now. They will be in the boat tents and perhaps going back over Henley Bridge, looking down this course to see what happens in the other semi-final. Well, that's the back of Megan Calmo we can come see coming towards us. She said after the race yesterday that we're very happy to get out on the course and it's too good to blow the cobwebs out. It's her first Henley together and it's been a great experience. They're looking forward to racing and you look forward to racing on this course in conditions like this. Really big support, really big enthusiasm on the course tonight. And there are a few waves, there are a few chops, but this American pair is handling it pretty well. And Greg, you mentioned blowing the cobwebs out. This course, like no other, <laughs> blows the cobwebs yeah. out. I remember that distinctly. Just the extra few hundred metres um, and the, the, you know, the match racing scenario. I remember, yes, absolutely blowing the cobwebs out. Yeah, and it is that match racing thing. We saw the double from the pair from the Netherlands really try and get out early, try to make this a match race, try and get them, their bows in front, try and see if they could open a gap. 
but this pair from America were able to hold their poise, hold their composure, and got into a slightly better rhythm, and now that rhythm is just still coming, still churning it along, and they've opened up a good gap, probably about two and a half lengths, as they come toward, into this third quarter, coming up towards the Remenham Club there. And they're giving, they're giving the boat a bit of time to run, too. You, when we had that overhead close-up of them, um, you know, a lot of power through the water, but then allowing the boat to run in between strokes and uh, still a bit more time. And just seeing the back of Monica Lance there coming towards us. It all looks like it's moving pretty well. There's just that little bit more dynamism from that American pair. And again, like you say, Jimmy, that sort of quietness around the finish that we see from the American pair as they just are able to let the, let the water go and then relax and let the boat come back to them. Yeah, it's important, you know, especially uh, into the headwind and the longer course, um, conserve a bit of energy, nice and efficient, and uh, just keep the Dutch where they can see them, and they're pretty comfortable there. I'm always amazed at the women's rowing program in the US. They are, have such strength and depth, and it can only be the legacy of Title IX, where you, the law was passed in the about 42 years ago now that you had to spend the same amount on women's sports as you did on men's sports, and the beneficiary of that has been women's rowing. And, you know, I've had the misfortune or fortune of racing against many an American women's eight that are so fast. And what I love now is we're beginning to see them step out into the smaller boats, which they haven't always been able to do. We see um, some great results, but not those pure goals that they're used to achieving in their women's eight. And it's going to be great tomorrow, I think. Not that I want to predict it after the last race we just had when we, we saw Cam Girdle. Maybe not quite in this position, but um, perhaps have a mishap and, and come to um, Dunham to overtake him. But if they are getting into the final tomorrow, I'd love to see. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens against the Kiwi pair that we saw go so fast in Poznan just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I think we're pretty sure that they're going to get through here. They're, um, the Americans are looking very, very strong. Very experienced campaigners in that pair. Doing it nicely. The Dutch having a few problems with the geese. Are they geese or ducks or? Those are geese. We've actually got boats at Henley called Goose, Goose Patrol that go around and throw bread and try to tempt those geese to keep them off the course, corral them all day so the course remains clear of geese. And the course has been clear ahead of Megan Calmo and Tracy Iser. For the last five minutes or so after that early scare where the crew from the Netherlands got out in front, but then they found their pace and they steered a lovely course really down that Barcher station and uh, now as they come in with about 15 strokes to go it's all looking good for the American pair. The New York Athletic Club insignia on their backs going very nicely in front of the grandstand. So we see them coming down to the line now. And just a lovely display, moving that pair so nicely, so well together. Calmo and Isa come across the line. And they're going to be able to relax. We see confirmation there of that win. In the women's pair for the crew of Calmo and Isa over Lands and Rustenburg from the Netherlands. A quick congratulations, thumbs up from Megan Calmo in the bow seat to the crew from the Netherlands. Now they're going to go, want to go away and uh, get the lactate out of their legs. The lactate that got into their legs right at the start here when the two crews were powering it away from the start. And look at that early power, that lean back that we talked about early on the race that just set them up, Greg, into that headwind, pressing the boat away, legs still dominant, but that body being used really efficiently, and they just opened up the lead, stroke after stroke, moving away from the Dutch. Well, people often ask me why a rower's so tall, and the answer I say is because it's all about leverage, and it's all about distance per stroke. And what we were able to see, that American crew were just able to row that little bit further per stroke, just by leaning that little bit further back with their arms and maximising uh, the length they could get every stroke. And to me, that was just what made the difference. When they got into their pace, they just kept moving.